Why do we need a wideband oxygen sensor? Aside from it looking cool on the dash, there's a few functional reasons that we would run in a wideband O2 sensor in a car. One, for, one reason would be to verify that the tune is running where we want it to be running. So if you want to make sure the car is running storage under certain operating conditions, the gauge is going to tell you that. If you want to know that the car is running 11 to 1 air, air fuel ratio on a wide open throttle pull, the gauge is going to tell you that. And it's, it's a good safety measure because if you're going wide open throttle and the gauge reads lean, you'll know to let off because you could do possible engine damage. So I'm going to start by showing you now this uh, particular AEM X-Series gauge, what's, what comes in the box, and we'll go from there and start installing this thing. So we've just opened this wideband oxygen sensor kit, and we'll start with the contents of the kit. So first we have here is the oxygen sensor. This is a Bosch LSU 4.9 unit. And then we have here the wideband controller gauge. So this functions also as a controller and a gauge to give you the reading. And then we would have here the sensor harness, which attaches the sensor to the controller. And this is the main harness, which provides power and ground to the controller. And also we have here a few wire crimps and a rubber band. And we're also supposed to have a bung that was provided in this kit. But someone opened this box up and took my bung from this. I don't know what for. I hope it wasn't you, Mustang Alex, but that's not a big deal. We can get another we can get another bunk for this, it's not a big big problem for me. And also there's the instructions here which also come with a list of what's supposed to be packaged in the box here. You can read them when you open your box. And also has, it has the wiring schematics just to go over the way it should be wired in the car. We'll also cover that as well in this video. So the first step in installing this thing is to determine where in the car do we want to install it because that's going to dictate how we're going to route the wiring, where we're going to get the, the power and ground signal from. So, so it's always a good idea to first just have a general idea of where we want to put this thing. So in this car, I'm probably going to end up deleting this vent over here and putting it right here just like that. And then we'll run the wire down and we'll find a suitable location to route it through the firewall to the, to the part of the exhaust where we're going to put the, the oxygen sensor. So we'll have to open up this console. I'm pretty sure there's a power harness behind this carpet here because when I wired in the motor, I took a few power signals from there just to get the wiring harness done. So I know there's a few empty circuits in there that we can use to power this thing. So let's go on and look underneath. Where are we going to place the, the oxygen sensor now? So I'm going to start by where Toyota actually decided to put the factory oxygen sensor in this thing. So as you can see, it's right after the turbo outlet. To, to my liking, I don't like to put it that close to the turbo outlet because it, it's the EGTs there are kind of hot and it'll shorten the life of the sensor. And as well in this application, this is a cast iron downpipe. So it'll be kind of hard to drill through this thing and to weld it in because uh, it's kind of difficult to weld on cast iron with a MIG welder. So I'm going to raise the car and we're going to look under, underneath and see if there's any alternate locations we can, we can place this. The next best place I'm looking at down here, so you can see where the cast iron downpipe ends. I'm thinking we're going to put this wideband oxygen sensor just below the flex. I don't like putting it after a flex because the flexes break sometimes over time and then they start to leak and give us a bad reading. But with this configuration, I don't really have a choice and I just put this flex in not too long ago. So at least for this season, it should be good to go. So I'm going to end up uh, putting it over here and you want to just take the oxygen sensor and just like mock it up as to where you put it before you drill into the pipe just to make sure it's clear of any obstructions or anything and to make sure you have a good enough space to run this wire. And that's about it. Once, once you have a good location, you'll just want to just mark it there, put an X where you want to put it, and start drilling. Man, these stupid drill bits won't even cut through butter, yo. Come on. Make sure you use a good drill bit. Now it's time to weld this thing on, and don't forget to use your goggles. Okay. 
just want to give it a talk at first just to make sure it's in the right place just in case you want to make any changes and then once you're satisfied with the position of the of the O2 sensor then you can weld all the way around the bunk but make sure you take the sensor off the bunk before you weld all the way around it Now that we have the gauge installed onto the vent, so you can see what we did here. Just put the two screws through the back of the vent there, we removed the flaps. We could then proceed to mock it up and see how it looks. I'm not going to plug these harnesses in just yet because we're going to have to take it out again to, to route the wiring. So let's just pop it in and see how it looks. Perfect, that looks good there. So now we're gonna go ahead and run the wiring harness. So first thing we're gonna route is a sensor harness and this is a fairly long harness. So we're gonna start by looking at the place we're gonna, we're gonna route it through. And the rule of thumb is to keep this harness out of any moving parts or any sources of heat. You don't wanna run it too close to the exhaust or too close to any belts or anything like that. So let's see where we're gonna run it through. Try and put it behind this bottle here. Try and grab the other end from here. I'm just gonna go and run this end through the firewall. It's kind of buried in here. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. And now we'll have to catch, pull this side from the inside of the car. So now we're going to pull the harness through the firewall inside the vehicle compartment. So unfortunately this is the job I hate the most, it's crawling underneath the dash. Ouch! No fun at all crawling under here. At least the wire is here, I can see it. Let me just give it a pull. Ah, son of a... Ah. Not fun at all. Ah. So when you pull this wire through, you can pull it until you start to feel resistance. If you feel it tugging on something, don't force it. Just stop and then see if it's caught on anything. Ah. And don't goof up like me. I routed it the wrong way. And at least we won't have to pull it back out from the firewall. But I'm gonna have to reroute this end of it. And I really, I really hate doing things twice, but you know what? Sometimes, sometimes it happens. So at least it won't be too hard to pull it from here and just route it in the correct way. We wanna try and keep this as neat as possible because wires, when you install wire, wiring stuff and you're careless with it, it gets messy real fast. And when you wanna come in here like a year later to do something else, you're not gonna know what the hell's going on. And before we zip tie this into its final position, we're just gonna make the connections inside the cabin. So now that we have this length of wire inside the cabin, we have to get it up here to where the gauge is gonna sit. So now we have to try and run this through the dashboard. So I'm gonna just try and fish it up as it is and see if we can just get it from here, if we can see it. If not, we're gonna have to take a piece of uh, maybe brake line or something along those lines or a coat hanger and fish it through and then pull it up. But let's, let's see if we can do it without having to do that. Let's see if we can just get it over there. Oh, beautiful, we got lucky today. So as you can see, that's way too much slack. So we're gonna have to take care of the slack by pulling it from the firewall and see how much we have left over in the engine compartment. So what I'm gonna do here first, I'm gonna just plug this into the back of the gauge here. Oh, come on, they don't make these plugs easy. Make them small. And there we go, we have it in there. I'm just gonna position this here like so. I'm gonna take out the slack. Pull that in. 
since I'm here as well, I'm just going to take the liberty to install the main harness that will supply power to this uh, wideband gauge. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to fish this up in the same fashion that I fished up the sensor harness. So let's get this in there. Let's rest this down here for a sec. I want to put the weight on that. There it is. And she's up. And I can't forget to put these vents back in, which I probably shouldn't have plugged this in. Yes, I probably shouldn't have plugged this in, so I'm gonna have to go and unplug that wire again, unfortunately, and here we are doing things twice again, but you know, sometimes these things happen. All right, so now we have to fish the wire through this thing because unfortunately, we can't plug it in and my vents are not gonna work, right? So let's fish it through. We'll go like so. And then we're gonna have to plug it into here. All right. Wait a minute. If I put it through like this, then my vents are not gonna seal. What am I gonna do? That means I gotta drill this thing. Man, I gotta get the drill now. I gotta put a hole in this. Oh man, it's never easy. This shit's never easy, man. It's a drill bit. These are for metal, not for plastic. So, let's see, does that one fit? Barely. Come on. Ah. I don't want to break these because these connectors are very delicate. So we're going to try and widen this hole a bit more. It's a good thing I kept the drill on me this time. All right, that should do it. Oh yeah, perfect. That's gonna go through and get in there. That's one. That one get in. Man. Almost there. That's it. We're in. And now this should clip in like so. It's a clip. Yes, it's in. So one last thing to do before I put this back in the dash, I'm just gonna stuff a rag in there so so the heat from the from the HVAC system doesn't cook the gauge or anything. I make it last longer. Now we want to take up any of the slack. Before we do that, we want to plug in the original connectors for the hazard switch and the clock. And now we can take the slack from this end. And just gonna go in. Perfect, you want it. And that's that for the dashboard here. We're not gonna have to do anything here anymore. We're done here. All that's left now is to wire in the power in the ground and plug it into the sensor in the front. That's it. So I just wanted to elaborate on the main harness a little bit more since this is where all the wiring we're gonna to do today is gonna to take place. We'll start with how we're gonna wire this in today. So the red wire is gonna be our switch 12 volt. So you can probably wire this to say your accessory or ignition on power. And you're going to want to use a 5 amp fuse just before the gauge, just for safety in case there's a short or whatever. You don't want to do any damage to the gauge or start any fires. So I highly recommend you put this 5 amp fuse just before it on the power side. And we're also going to wire a black ground wire. So it's going to use the black wire on the harness. And you can ground this to the body of the car anywhere that has a clean ground. And uh, this, this gauge in particular has a couple of more features that we won't be using in this particular application, but I'll just go over them since we're here. This gauge is compatible with CAN bus communication, so if you have a standalone uh, computer or like a data logger that supports CAN bus communications, it would run off of, if 
find the wires here. The green and black and the white and black are your, are your CAN bus wires. And it also has uh, serial communications as well to work with some loggers or to provide PC connectivity, which would be these two wires here, the blue and the white. But we're not going to be using those in this, so we'll just keep it simple. So now that we ran the wires to where we need to run them to, we're just going to finish off by wiring in the connections and then closing off the panels. We can take the, uh, the slack out of the sensor harness and we can pull it from under the hood. There, I feel some resistance, then we're going to check. Ah, tangled on the gas pedal now. It's never easy. It's always something with this, this stuff. So now we have to pull the wire back because it tangled around the gas pedal. Check one more time, and that's perfect. That's exactly how I want it. So now that we finished off running the wire through the interior of the car, we can now go ahead and zip tie this wire and finalize the installation. And the next step will be to plug this end in into the sensor. So we're gonna have to lift the car for that. We can make the final connection. And that's that. And now we just have to tuck away the excess and we're pretty much ready to start this thing and see if it works. All right, let's start it up. So now the sensor is gonna heat up before it gives us a reading. We're gonna wait for that to heat up. And uh, one more note, these sensors basically, they come pre-calibrated from the factory. So on initial startup, you don't have to calibrate these, but they do give you the option to calibrate them, which is good as this, because as the sensor ages, you, you will have the option to recalibrate it every so often, I don't know, you can recalibrate it maybe every year, or if you race a car frequently, you can do it every race. But that's up to you, but it's good to do it. It's a free air calibration. You basically hold the sensor up in, in clean air, in fresh air. You pull it out of the bunk, you run the calibration procedure, and it just calibrates the sensor. So it, it allows you to use the sensor for a longer time, and it accounts for the, for the variances as the sensor ages. So that's about it. The sensor looks like it's working. I'm going to take the car out for a spin and see how she runs on wide open throttle. And that's that. I'll see you next time.